Hi class, uh, welcome to the class Reptilia. Um, this first part will pair up with the first page of your note packet, so please make sure you have that ready and in front of you. So we're going to start with kind of the evolutionary history of how you go from amphibians to reptiles. And basically it comes down to the egg. Amphibians were still connected to water, um, both in reproduction and um, like their eggs also had to remain moist. Um, so that forced amphibians to live in moist habitats. They also needed to be able to exchange gases through their skin. About 350 million years ago, a membrane develops around the embryo and the eggs, and this is called the amniotic egg. Um, so the group of animals that we're going to talk about from here on out are called the amniota, and these are reptiles, birds, and mammals. So the amniotic egg is not found in fish or amphibians, and the key here is at the top left, the amniotic layer. Um, and this adds additional protection. Um, there's a yolk sac for um, food or nutrition. Um, and then there's a protective outer shell as well, either a leathery shell or a calcareous shell. So the amnion's function is to protect the embryo from drying out and provides cushioning. It's fluid filled. Then there is a layer called the allantois. Um, it collects wastes from the embryo so that it doesn't poison the embryo. There's a chorion uh, layer that is for gas exchange. There's a yolk sac that provides nutrients, and um, the amniotic eggs of birds and reptiles have a leathery or hard shell around them. Uh, the mammals lack an allantois because they are connected to the mom through a placenta to get rid of uh, wastes. Um, same thing with the yolk sac, um, the nutrition is provided to a, a mammalian fetus, so they don't need that extra layer in there. Um, but there's still the amnion with amniotic fluid um, in mammals. Okay, so looking at the anatomy and looking to see how reptiles are unique, uh, fish don't have a neck, so they, they can't turn their head uh, away from their body. Amphibians will have a single cervical or neck bone. It's called the atlas, and it has two points on it. The little points that stick out are called occipital condyles. I'm not going to ask you what those are called, but that's what they're called. Um, and it kind of connects into the skull, and it allows them to nod their head up and down like yes. And then reptiles actually have an additional cervical vertebrae, and this is the same that we have. So they have an atlas and an axis. So this allows them to nod their head yes and turn their head and shake it no. Um, and that's going to be very important as far as predatory lifestyles and the ability to um, have more locomotion. So this just looking at the skeletons and comparing them. And then we look at their skulls. Um, there's different categories of skulls, and basically they're, they're looking at the number of holes in your head, essentially. Um, so anapsids, an means without, and hapsis is arch. So these anapsis um, or anapsid skulls have no opening, and the opening scientific word for that opening is a fenestre or fenestra. And this is in the temporal region, so like in the, you know, where you have your temple or above your ear, we're talking about in that area. Um, turtles have this uh, type of skull, but it's not because they are um, that old evolutionarily. It's actually because of something called convergent evolution. Then there are synapsids. These guys have one hole in their head, and it's for muscle attachment for the jaws. And this is something that we have. We have uh, we're a synapsid. And then there's the diapsid skulls, and they have two holes. Um, and these are what our living reptiles have, dinosaurs and birds. Okay, so we're looking at uh, an evolutionary tree. 
Um, mostly it's, I would call it a cladogram because they're showing different um, unique characteristics that develop in these species. If you look way up at the top, these are the all the amniota, so all of the organisms that have amniotic eggs. And then it's broken down into the synapsids, anapsids, and diapsids. And then you can follow it down further. Um, in the red square are the reptiles that we will be talking about. But you can see there's dinosaurs on here, there's birds on here, there's mammals on here. So you can take a look at that. You can pause the video if you wish. Um, and now, just another view showing the evolutionary development from the most primitive reptile skull to all the current animal skulls or extinct ones. And believe it or not, they are pretty much considering birds to be part of the reptile class um, or at least related to reptiles very closely. And they're, they're looking at the skull. Um, they they have a single occipital condyle, um, so they have that, that uh, way to turn their heads. They have one ear bone, the ossicle is an ear bone, the stapes. They have the same lower jaw structure as reptiles. They don't have a secondary palate, and that's like the roof of your mouth. Um, and they have a lot of genes and proteins in common. So they classify birds uh, or reptiles as either non-avian reptiles and avian reptiles. This is the last slide um, for this section of notes, so you can um, take a break or you can move on to part two.